morning, Freeman Kennedy staff, students, and invited guests. Dr. Ingrid Alardi, Superintendent of Schools, Mrs. Victoria Saldana, Director of Curriculum, Mrs. Linda Balfour, the Principal of the H. Hall of Day, Mr. Azen Tar Tarzik, the Assistant Principal of the Freeman Kennedy School, Mr. Justin Casanova Davis, the Town Administrator, Mrs. Nancy Smith, Adam Kennedy's mom, Mrs. D Diane Nielsen, the Mass Military Heroes, the Reese Across America Ambassadors, Mr. and Mrs. Delane and Debbie Kellogg, members of the Norfolk Police and Fire Department. We also have in our audience today Vietnam veterans. Mr. Thomas Cleverton, who is the class United States Army with his wife, Mrs. Cleverton, and his son, Mr. Andrew Cleverton, and his wife, Mrs. Valerie Cleverton, and he, he is the grandson of Jeffrey Cleverton in sixth grade right here. We have Mr. Anton Fafford, United States Navy, USS um, Forrestal, with, Ms., with his wife, Mrs. D.D. D. Fafford, his son, Timothy Fafford, and his wife, Mrs. Cara Fafford, and grandfather of Riley Fafford, a fourth grade student here at Freeman Kennedy School. We have Mr. P. O'Donnell, United States Army, with his daughter-in-law, Mrs. Kristen O'Donnell, and his grandfather to Gavin O'Donnell, right here in front of me. We also have Mr. Bill Cobert, who is the United States Marine Corps. He is a friend of our Chief of Police, Mr. Timmy Hines. I would now like to call upon three of our students, Gavin, Riley, and Jeffrey, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Star Stangled Banner. Thank you, Mr. Fork and the Advanced Band. Everyone may be seated. Today, we are gathered together as a school family to learn about the educational mission and purpose of Reese Across America and how all of us can remember, honor, and learn about veterans not just today, but every day. Prior to last May, I personally did not know the educational mission of Reese Across America until of one of Adam Kennedy's best friends, Joseph Regan, contacted me. Adam and Joe attended Norwich University together and then went on to serve their country. He shared that the goal of Reese Across America was to honor, teach, and remember. Mr. Regan was eager to share Adam's legacy as a friend and a veteran. Today, you will learn more about Adam Kennedy through a virtual interview with Joseph Regan and co-anchored by two of our sixth grade students. For the past six months, I have had many Google Meets with Joe Regan and staff members from Reese Across America to learn about how I can provide educational opportunities for our students and staff to be good citizens and to think beyond ourselves within our own communities and world. As I reflected on today's assembly, I wanted to emphasize that every person has a story, and sometimes those stories are hidden and never heard. When we think about veterans, 
We want to hear their stories and who they are as people and how they've made a difference for us to live freely in the United States of America. Sharing stories about others recognizes who they are as people and the special role they chose to give back to others. Today in our assembly, you learn more about who Adam Kennedy was as a person and how he served our country. We will officially welcome home three, I mean four, Vietnam veterans, who, three of them who are grandfathers to three of our students here at Freeman Kennedy School by an official pinning ceremony this morning. Our Reese Across America ambassadors will share some educational videos with students and staff. We will honor Adam Kennedy at the memorial in the front of our school by laying a wreath and our school community will walk through Reese Across America Mobile Educational Exhibit. As I conclude my message today, I want to remind everyone that each of us has the ability to make a positive mark in our school, our community, and our world. How can each of us do something to give back and to create a positive story? Within the next five years, a goal of mine will be to go to Arlington National Cemetery in December lay wreaths on stones of veterans, and learn about the stories as a way of honoring and giving back. As I proceed through today's assembly, my goal is for everyone to learn something new about why we teach and honor veterans. Thank you for coming to the Reese Across America Assembly today. I hope everyone enjoys their day and touring the Reese Across America mobile exhibit. Thank you. I'd now like everyone to actually um, turn to the big screen in the gymnasium, and you are going to see a virtual interview with Mr. Joe Regan, and it was interviewed by Sam and Miley from our um, FK Morning Show. Hello, I'm Sam. And I'm Miley. We have the honor of interviewing Joe Regan, Director of Military and Veteran Outreach for Wreaths Across America. Joe is going to talk a bit about his friendship with Adam Kennedy and his role in Wreaths Across America. Welcome, Joe. Thank you for taking your time to talk with us today. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to be with you this morning. Thank you. We'd start by, uh, we'll start out by learning how you and Adam became friends. So Adam and I went to college together. So in the fall of 2000, uh, Adam and I started at Norwich University, which is in Vermont, central Vermont. Um, we were both part of a program called the Mountain Cold Weather Company. And that trained students on how to do everything from rock climbing to skiing uh, to how to rescue people in the mountains. And for our four years at Norwich, um, we did all that. We did a lot of hiking. We did rock climbing. We did ice climbing. I actually brought a picture of me or of him. This is Adam and my friend Mike skiing. So, so cool. while many people might take a chairlift, we would actually have to walk up the mountain with our skis, and then we would ski back down. Mm -hmm. So we were very, very uh, fitness-oriented, and uh, we would practice all the time to go up into the mountains and to rescue people that might be having a hard time. Did you ha did you have like any like funny memories of when you guys were training? Mm -hmm. So many of you probably have brothers and sisters, right? And maybe not you two in particular, but do you wrestle with your brothers and sisters? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people do. So we, I remember one night we had gone for a, a hike, and I believe it was around Thanksgiving time, and uh, there weren't many people left at school. And so when we got back, it was late at night, and myself, Adam, and one of my other friends, uh, James Bithorn, we all wound up on the parade grounds. So we went to a military, Norwich is a military school. Mm -hmm. So we would have parades every Friday where we would line up and have these parades. And so the three of us lined up together and we had our own little mini parade down the, uh, the parade grounds. And uh, James and Adam were taking it very seriously and I did not take it very seriously. And about halfway through, I turned around and I tackled Adam and it turned into a giant wrestling match in the middle of the, in the, middle of the field. Um, I think we were juniors that year. So that was our third year of college that that happened. Would you say that would be a very special memory of you and Adam? I've, absolutely. And I have a lot of different memories of Adam's, but I think that one just kind of captures his sense of humor 
and that bond that he made with everyone that was around him. So in addition to mountain cold weather, both of us were what we call student ambassadors for the school. So we would meet with students that might want to high school students that might be interested in going to college at Norwich and we would talk about our experiences. So even today, when I meet alumni from Norwich, people that graduated from Norwich, they'll talk about how people like myself and Adam gave them a tour of campus, talked about the school, and that was what convinced them to go to Norwich as well. What do you want us to know most about Adam as a person? I think the thing that, the two things when I think of Adam, are one, his sense of humor. He was just really, really funny. Uh, his nickname was Raptor Man, because now you probably think of Jurassic Park and you think of the new movies that are just coming out. Well, when we were in college, that was the original Jurassic Park movies were coming out. Uh, so he would used to go around, we had this little room that we would plan all of our hikes in. And he would uh, walk around and pretend to be a velociraptor and would jump up on the table. So that's why we called him Raptor Man. Um, so his sense of humor, I think, is one. But his commitment to helping others is something I think is also very important. And I think that's really awesome that with the school being, you know, with your school being named after him is something that I hope that all the students take away is that Adam was, was really, really committed to helping other people. And that I feel it's up to all of us to you know live up to that legacy that he left behind for us we right, he's he's not able to to give back to people anymore so it's up to us all of us you you guys included uh to be good students to be good citizens to be and to be helpful to folks in our community um how did you feel about adam's passing i was very sad uh so when i learned that adam had passed i was actually in afghanistan myself. Uh, so after college, both of us served. Uh, Adam was with a unit in uh, Alaska, and I was uh, in a unit out of New York. Uh, so I was overseas when I learned that he was uh, that he had passed. And I wasn't able to go to his, uh, his funeral, unfortunately. But my dad went. Um, and I remember his dad, my dad met with Adam's mom. And that was um, at least a brief moment of, of, of uh, I don't want to say happiness, but that's probably the best word to use where it, it brought light to the fact that she knew that there were those of us that knew Adam well, that really cared um, and wanted to be there for, for him and for her and the rest of his family. Um, how do you, what do you think, uh, um, uh, wait, did you already do that one? No, you didn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what do you think about Adam, but what, what do you think uh, Adam would think about having a school named after him? <sighs> I don't know. It's, it's, you know, when Adam was killed, he would have been uh, 25 or 26. I can't remember exactly. At, at that point, I don't think any one of us ever would have ever thought about having a school named after us. But I think if we were to ask him today and he were to look at all of us and what we've done in the course of our lives, I think he would be a little embarrassed because I think he, he probably, he was humble. So he probably wouldn't think that he was, he deserved that sort of, of honor to have a school named after him, even though he absolutely does because he represents so many good things that, uh, that we all should look up. That's what we should all try to, to be, is some, be someone like Adam. Uh, but I think that he would want students to follow that path that he had chose for himself of, of choosing ways to serve the community. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the military, but finding ways to, to serve, whether it be as a, a you know, teacher or, or a, a police officer or a firefighter, there's a number of different ways that, that people can serve. And I think that's what Adam would want uh, folks to, to take away from that if, if, you know, with the school being named after him. How did you become involved with Reese Across America? So as a veteran, uh, it's very important to me to make sure that we share the stories of uh, our fe my fellow veterans, including those like Adam, who, who were uh, killed in, in combat. Uh, so I got involved with Reads Across America because I used to run a small nonprofit that was helping uh, other veterans. And Reads Across America was one of our partners. So uh, I met the founder and our executive director of, of Reads Across America and became very good friends with them. And uh, they really wanted me to come work for them because they, they saw 
an opportunity to really share the stories of um, uh, of, of our service members, veterans, and, and their families. When we go to, when you participate in Wreaths Across America, you know, it's not just about laying a wreath on a headstone. It's about using that opportunity to learn who each and every one of these people were in their lives. You know, today we're talking about Adam and his life, but if you go to a cemetery, a military cemetery, each one of those headstones is, is you know, its own story. And when we learn about that, I think that's really, really important because um, they're a great example of, of how we can all give back to our communities and to our country. Um, a follow-up question to that is, um, have you ever laid a wreath on um, a grave? Absolutely. Uh, so I have been participating in Reads Across America now for um, it probably close to seven, seven years, maybe eight years. And yes, so my last active duty assignment was in Washington, D.C. Uh, so I was near Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, I lived in Maine for a period of time where there's a, a couple of different cemeteries that we participated in. And in my job, I go every year to Arlington National Cemetery and I lay a wreath there as well. And it is, um, sometimes it's somebody that I know, uh, sometimes it's somebody that one of my friends knows and asks me to lay, make sure that a wreath is laid at their headstone because they can't make it themselves. Um, or sometimes it's a parent. One of our, um, um, General Ann McDonald, who's a good friend of mine, her parents are both buried at Arlington National Cemetery and she does not live in the area. So she's asked me to, to go each year to visit her parents um, and make sure that their their headstone gets a, a wreath each year. Um, it is. It's a really powerful moment where you can learn something. I have uh, I have two kids, so I have uh, a second grader and a fifth grader, and I bring them with me every year so that they can they can participate and they look forward to it each and every year. Um, we are excited to welcome Wreaths Across America to our school. What do you want students to know about the special organization? I want students to learn about the stories of our veterans. I think that is what I hope you all take away from that. Uh, each year, we choose a theme for, for the year that we, we operate off of. And this year's theme is, is find a way to serve. And when we look at our veterans and what they've done for us, the best way that we can remember them and honor those veterans is finding our own ways to serve. And, and, and as, as young students, sometimes you might think, well, I'm just a, you know, I'm just a fifth grader. I'm just a, you know, an elementary school student. But there's things that you can do and finding ways to give back in your communities. And so that I hope when you learn about that pro the, our program, that it inspires you to find ways to, to give back to, to your community, to your school, and to your country. Thank you, Joe, for taking time to talk with us today. We appreciate your time, and we are happy to learn more about Adam and your role with Roofs Across America. Well, thank you guys so much for having me as well. And I, should, I wanted to share as well, um, I shared another photograph with your teachers that show uh, a memorial that some of the students at Norwich have made for Adam. Um, so we have, that was another picture that I shared, just to show how Adam is continues to uh, inspire and influence so many other folks that uh, that were connected with him. And I hope that as you learn more about him, that uh, that you do the same. We will. <laughs> Thank you again for taking time to interview with us today. Absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me. Can I, can I have Sam and Miley stand up for a minute? Where are you guys? Awesome job. Awesome job. Thank you very much. And I'd also like to thank Mrs. Tuseri who actually helped coordinate the interview um, and recordings of that interview. I have probably watched that interview about five times, and I think it's really special that we know a lot more about who Adam was as a person, and that we have a connection now to Joe Regan, who actually was one of Adam's good friends. So that is something that will hold special in our hearts here at Freeman Kennedy School, and that we now have that video forever, that we can share that with students actually that enter our school from year to year as well. 
I'd now like to turn your attention to our third grade students who are sitting right here on the bleachers. And they are going to sing Thank You Soldiers by Michael and Angela Sa Saunders. Amazing job, grade three. Thank you, Mrs. Musial. I'd now like to call upon our W, our Reese Across America ambassadors, Mr. Delane and Mrs. Deborah Kellogg, who will introduce some of the videos of what is inside the mobile um, educational exhibit for Reese Across America. Um, I'm just going to let you know if, if you were walking into the exhibit on a regular day, the back part of it is a, like a little mini museum. We have boards that tell you all about Reese Across America, how we got started and everything. And then you go into the, uh, thank you, you go into the movie part we can set 20 people at a time. But when you first come in, we try to give you the pre-story. We're not like Star Wars. We're going to tell you the beginning first instead of watching the movies and then telling you. But uh, the way everything kind of got started was when Moral Worcester, 
the founder of Reese Across America, was 12 years old. He sold the most subscriptions to a newspaper in Bangor, Maine. That won him a trip down to Washington, D.C. He got to go see the monuments and memorials, and he got to go to Arlington National Cemetery, where the headstones were just bare. Um, I learned this morning from Sean that he actually saw somebody lay a wreath, and he was thinking, I can do better than that. So when he got older, he started his own wreath-making company. In 1992, he had 5,000 wreaths left over. Arlington made such an impact on him at 12 years old that he automatically thought, you know what, I want to do something for the veterans buried at Arlington. I'm going to take these 5,000 wreaths there. And that is not a small feat. It takes two days in a semi-truck to get from where he is in Maine down to Arlington National Cemetery. He had 12 people helping him. They had 5,000 wreaths to lay. So that's pretty much an all-day commitment. And then it's two days to get back home. A lot of people would say, okay, I'm done. But he thought, you know what? This was a good thing, and we're going to remember them veterans. So every year he made extra wreaths on purpose, and him and his family started a family tradition, 15 years of going down to Arlington and laying the wreaths just to remember veterans. It got so popular though because in 19, or sorry, 2005, there was a photograph taken with the snow all over the, the wreaths and the headstones and it's a gorgeous picture. It went viral. People started sending him money saying, how can I help? And he'd send the money back going, no, this is just a family tradition. But it, it got so popular that in 2007, we became a nonprofit. We went from the one cemetery in 1992 to this year, over 3,500 locations nationwide. There are 24 cemeteries overseas where U.S. veterans are buried. The goal is that no veteran should be forgotten. No matter where a veteran is buried, it doesn't have to be a national cemetery, it doesn't have to be a city cemetery, it can be a cemetery out in the middle of a pasture. And there are some of those. They're really old, but there are some. If there's a veteran buried there, you lay the wreath on the headstone and you say that person's name and you thank them for their service. So we want to remember every veteran. We want to honor those who are serving and who have served. And we want to teach the next generation that freedom isn't free. So the videos will tell the rest of the story. Thank you. Reads Across America is an organization that is like no other. It almost touches every person in the United States at some level. The mission is to remember, honor, and teach. What we give our kids that we've learned from the past is what's going to help them form the future. It's important to teach not just the kids, but everybody. We need to share that freedom isn't free. Wreaths Across America started when my husband, who was in the wreath business, had too many wreaths. We had about a truckload left over that year, which is about 5,000. I mean, we were trying to think of what we could do with them that would do a maybe some good to some people. Thought about Arlington National Cemetery. He's very patriotic. He just wanted to say thank you. Out of respect for what we have in this country. So it became a family tradition. And it just struck a chord, I guess. It went around the world. I remember when I started, there's only a few people. And look, look at the turnout. It's the heart of the volunteer that makes our mission grow. And I like to say we have a heartbeat in every community. It grows because of the patriotism that is still alive and well all over the country. The Wreaths Across America wreath laying is really, it's a, it's a celebration of life. That one wreath symbolizes one family. One family that was able to smile because of the generous donations. That's him right here. Because everyone has a story. 
There's a story behind every name that you see here. His name was Germany Vargas. Isaac Thomas Cortez. Bryce Kenneth Powers. My son. My older brother Billy was a E9 in the United States Air Force. William Guy Neal. Just by saying their name, we're remembering them. We're remembering the sacrifice that they made for this country. It's January 18th, 2005. It's really important that people understand that Reads Across America is a year-round mission. My ultimate goal is to place a wreath on every single American veteran's grave, regardless of where it is. But we're among so many heroes here today that have fought for our freedom. There are American soldiers buried at, at over 24 different locations across the world that may not have family members that are able to visit them. Edward D. Fogden. You are sent over to save us, and you die in a place no one has ever heard of. And that's, that's your life. It's our goal to one day be able to say we placed a wreath at every headstone of our American military members buried overseas. We have a saying here that you die twice. First when you stop breathing, and the second time when your name is spoken for the very last time. The biggest fear Gold Star families have that their child will be forgotten. A mother's love never dies. It never dies. Regina, we thank you for your service. It doesn't matter how they died. It just matters that they fought for our freedom. Makes me feel extremely proud. Their character, their sacrifice, is not just our past, it's our future. And the foundation of this country was built on the lives of those men and women that we choose to honor. Ask yourself, where would I be? What would my life be like? Was it not for our veterans who have stepped up for all of us, time and time again over the course of our nation's history? Hello, I am Miles Worcester. My grandfather is Moral Worcester. He is the founder of Reads Across America, and he says he is just a wreath maker from Maine. He has been asked countless times, what is a veteran's wreath, and why do we place wreaths on veterans' graves? A veteran's wreath is made of 10 bouquets. Each bouquet describes a veteran. The first bouquet stands for a veteran's belief in greater good. The second bouquet stands for their love for one another. The third bouquet stands for a veteran's strength, work ethic, and character. The fourth bouquet stands for a veteran's honesty and integrity. The fifth bouquet stands for a veteran's humility, selflessness, and modesty. The sixth bouquet stands for a veteran's ambitions and aspirations. The seventh bouquet stands for a veteran's optimism for their fellow Americans and for our country. The eighth bouquet stands for the veteran's concern for the future and for future generations. The ninth bouquet stands for a veteran's pride to carry out their duties. The tenth bouquet and final bouquet stands for the veteran's hopes and dreams that didn't always come true but left with no regrets. Now this wreath made with 10 bouquets is a symbol of honor, respect, and victory. It is made from evergreens, which symbolizes longevity and endurance. The circular shape symbolizes eternity and has no beginning and no end. Its clean forest scent symbolizes purity and simplicity. Its red bow symbolizes great sacrifice this year, when you place a wreath on a veteran's grave, you know it's not just a wreath, it's a personal gift to an American hero. And you will swell with pride knowing that you have done something very, very special. God bless our veterans and God bless America. Thank you to our ambassadors, Mr. and Mrs. Kellogg, for showing us those videos. I know when I watched them, I learned a lot more basically about the symbol of a wreath that goes on every veteran's actually stone. Right now, we are going to have a welcome home Vietnam veterans pinning. We're going to call a grandfather and a grandson or granddaughter to come up 
and Mr. and Mrs. Kellogg will lead us basically in that pinning ceremony. At this time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Thomas Cleverton, 5th Class United States Army, and Jeffrey Cleverton to the podium. Okay, first I want to tell the kids, um, the reason we're doing this is because now when you look at people coming home from different war eras, there's a lot of people waving flags, telling them thank you for their service, welcome home, and that's awesome. That's the way it should be. The Vietnam War era veterans weren't welcomed home like that. They had to send their uniforms home through the mail and go buy street clothes just so they could go out in public. So this is a proclamation that was first signed in 2012. It'll be signed by every president after that until 2025. It's in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. This is not to celebrate the Vietnam War but to officially welcome home Vietnam veterans. This explains more about the pin I'm gonna give you. And this explains more about the commemoration. The pin has the eagle in the middle the blue for the cannons, laurel wreaths around it, and six stars for the six allies that fought along beside us. And it has a saying on the back. If you'll pin that on him, please. This is a challenge coin from wreaths across America. It has the Vietnam Memorial Wall with the wreaths underneath on the front. On the back, it says, our nation's blood and treasure from a generation ago deserves the nation's thanks and gratitude, something they did not receive when they came home from Vietnam. I need to shake your hand, sir. I'd now like to call upon Mr. Antoine Fafford, United States Navy, and his granddaughter, Riley Fafford. Hi. Again, this is the proclamation that was first signed in 2012, and it goes through 2025. This is not to celebrate the Vietnam War, but to officially welcome home the Vietnam veterans. That explains the pin more, and this explains the commemoration. The pin has the eagle in the middle, the blue for the cannons, the laurel wreaths around it, and the six stars for the six allies, and there's a saying on the back. Mm -hmm. 
She was reading it. The coin has the Vietnam Memorial Wall with the wreaths underneath. On the back it says, our nation's blood and treasure from a generation ago deserves the nation's thanks and gratitude, something they did not receive when they came home from Vietnam. I need to shake your hands. I'd now like to call upon Mr. P. O'Donnell, United States Army, and his grandson, Gavin O'Donnell. And I know some of you may be wondering why I'm going over this again and again. It's because every veteran deserves the same respect and welcome, not just, here's your paper. The commemoration was first signed in 2012. It'll be signed every year by every president after that until 2025. It's in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, but it is not to celebrate the war, but to officially welcome home Vietnam veterans. That explains more about the pen. This explains more about the commemoration itself. I'm trying to steady my hands, they shake. <laughs> the pen has the eagle in the middle, the blue for the cannons, the laurel wreaths around it, six stars for the six allies that fought along beside us, and it has a saying on the back. coin has the Vietnam Memorial Wall on the front with the wreaths on the underneath. On the back it says, our nation's blood and treasure from a generation ago deserves the nation's thanks and gratitude, something they did not receive when they came home from Vietnam. I'd now like to call upon uh, the Chief of Police of Norfolk, Mr. Uh, Timmy Hines, and his good friend, Mr. Bill Cobert, United States Marine Corps. And the challenge coin, it's a big thing in the military, okay? Um, when you hand a challenge coin to somebody, you can't just hand it to them. They can't go out and buy their own. It has to be handed to them in a handshake. Hi. The proclamation was first signed in 2012. It goes through 2025. It's in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. This is not to celebrate the Vietnam War, but to welcome home Vietnam veterans. The paper to 
tell about the pin, and this explains the commemoration itself. The pin has the eagle in the middle, the blue for the cannons, the laurel wreaths around it, and the six stars for the six allies that fought along beside us. On the back it has a saying. The challenge coin has the Vietnam Memorial Wall with the wreaths underneath. On the back it says our nation's blood and treasure from a generation ago deserves a nation's thanks and gratitude, something they did not receive when they came home from Vietnam. Welcome home to our Vietnam veterans, and thank you to um, Mr. and Mrs. Kellogg for actually performing those pinning ceremonies and for our students pinning their grandfathers or a good friend. At this point in our assembly, I'd like to turn um, our attention to our um, Freeman Kennedy Chorus over here to the right. Under the direction of Mrs. Christine Musiel, our chorus will sing We Honor You by Roger Emerson.
Beautifully done chorus in Mrs. Musial, thank you. At this time, I'd like to call upon our assistant principal, Mr. Adam Tarzik, who'll have um, a few closing remarks. Um, as a reminder, we will have a um, military wreath placing um, ceremony outside at um, Adams Memorial in the front of the school, so all our invited guests and our sixth grade students actually will be uh, participating in that. Um, thank you for um, being an awesome audience today and really taking the time to actually learn, you know, a, a little bit more about Reese Across America and their purpose and their mission. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I mean, it was really, truly an honor to take part in this ceremony today. And, and thanks to Lisa Altham Hickey, who put a lot of work behind the scenes and did an awesome job organizing this. So. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our, the Norfolk Town Manager, Mr. Justin Casanova Davis, for partnering with us to bring this event to our school and our community. I would also like to thank Dr. Ingrid Alardi, Superintendent of Norfolk Public Schools, the Norfolk Police and Fire Departments, our Technology Department, especially Mrs. Ducheri for facilitating the interview with Mr. Regan, the Advanced Band and Chorus. It was, again, a wonderful job, everybody, as always. Um, Mrs. Melick and her art classes for making all these beautiful wreaths that you'll see uh, inside and outside the school. The classes did a, a tremendous job with that. Uh, I know Mrs. Carter, Mrs. Tibbetts, and the Girl Scout crew, Troop number 82367 for lining the flags outside. They did a tremendous job in the cold and had to did a little audible this morning. They did a great job with that as well. So thank you guys. <laughs> um, we also like to thank. Oh, no. We also like to thank Mrs. Curran and all the staff members who have been part of the um, Reese Across America Committee to plan for today's event. Our facilities department and the entire Freeman Kennedy staff who have spent many hours behind the scenes to make this event meaningful and special for everyone. So remember, honor, and teach. I know the mission of Reeds Across America will stick with all of us in attendance. And as we walk around the school and see these beautiful wreaths decorating our halls, please take a moment to pause and quietly thank a soldier for their service. Let us appreciate the sacrifice that they gave to keep us all safe. Our assembly is now over, and uh, we'd like to invite our invited guests to walk over to Adam Kennedy's memorial for the wreath laying ceremony, followed by the sixth grade teachers and classes. Thank you guys all so much for attending. We are all proud to be Americans that live in a free society made up of many people from many walks of life. The freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. Lying here before us and in cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom and without fear. We can worship as we see fit. We can raise our children to believe as we do. We are free to vote for the leaders of our choosing, and we have the right to succeed, and we have the right to fail at whatever endeavor we wish to pursue. The United States of America was founded on the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. Our nation stands as a shining beacon of liberty and freedom to the world. We thank those who gave us their lives to keep us free, and we should not forget. We shall remember. Today, more than ever, we reflect on our nation's veterans and active service duty members who have had and continue to fight to protect the innocent and oppressed. This nation has always been the first to stand up for the freedom of the people from around the world. Many of you here today have answered that call and served your country well. For this, we say thank you, and we are honored to know you. There are many men and women serving today in all branches of the military, here at home and in places far away, that most of us have never heard of. These men and women are part of the best trained, basic, best equipped, force in the world. We honor them and their families for their sacrifices they make each day 
to keep our country safe from terror terrorism, hatred, and injustice. This year, we've added an additional ceremony wreath to honor the men and women currently serving in the U.S. Space Force, along with those veterans who have served in roles helping to secure our national interests in space. Quoting our 40th president, United States President Ronald Reagan, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was like in the United States of America where men were free. Today, we show a united front of gratitude and respect across the United States of America as we remember the fallen, honor those who serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. Now, Mrs. Nancy Smith, Adam Kennedy's mom, will lay a veteran's wreath in memory of Adam and those serving in the United States Army. Remember, we are not here today to decorate graves. We are here to remember not their deaths, but their lives. <laughs> Each wreath is a gift of appreciation from a grateful These live balsam fir wreaths symbolize our honor to those who have served and are serving in the armed forces, to our great nation, and to their families who endure sacrifices every day on our behalf. To our children, we want you to understand that the freedoms you enjoy today have not been free, but have come with a cost that some day you may have to pay yourself. As a nation standing together, we defeat her her terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Thanks to our veterans, we have the freedom just to do that. Right now, taps will be played by our instrumental band instructor, Mr. John Foraker.